and welcome to Ember's Reading Room, brought to us by viewers like you, who sent us an amazing box of books, which I, I couldn't resist, I did peek, there, there are a lot of golden books, thank you Sasami-chan, and it's going to be a little different, normally I, hi kitten, kitten wants to say hi, she's almost as camera shy as I am, even though she's all over the camera right now. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. <laughs> yeah, so instead of actually planning out the books, I'm planning to grab one from the box. I can tell you it's probably a golden book based on my thumbing through, but let's see what it is. Oh boy. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Hello, and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Now, if the editing worked out with small video clips. Today's book was drawn by Lot, actually by me, from a box that was donated to us by a listener slash viewer. So in case you skipped the picture and haven't looked at the thumbnail, today is Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, adapted from Grimm's Fairy Tales, illustrated by the Walt Disney Studio. Adapted by Ken O'Brien and Al Dempster from the Walt Disney motion picture, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Actually, it's spelled dwarfs, not dwarves. Hmm, this is probably also going to be the heavily abridged version. Well, it is a little golden book. There's only so much room. Mm. And hopefully her eyes look better than on the cover. It's a bit of a vacant gaze. Also, they're... Going two different directions. It's the opposite of cross-eyed. I settled for a vacant gaze. This was from the 38th printing in 1974. Wow. Back when the books were still 49 cents. Once upon a time, long, long ago, a lovely queen sat by her window sewing. As she worked, she thought, If only I had a little daughter, how happy I would be. Dreaming, she pricked her finger with her needle. Three drops of blood fell on the snow-white linen. I like how they did the O oh in once. It's also very nice art. I, it's been a while since I've seen the movie, but I don't remember a section like this in the movie. Oh, by the time you catch the movie on TV, you're past this point, because this point's very short. Uh, I'm talking about a DVD release. How lovely my little girl would be if she had lips as red as blood, skin as white as snow, and hair as black as ebony, thought the queen. Sometime later, a little daughter was born to the queen, and she was just as beautiful as the queen had hoped she might be. The happy mother decided to call her baby Snow White. But the queen was very ill, and when Snow White was still a little girl, her mother died. Snow White's father, the king, was broken-hearted. For many years, he was sad and lonely. But at last, the lonely king married again, and there was great rejoicing in the land. His new queen was very beautiful to look upon, but alas, her heart was cold and cruel. The queen was vain, too. She would spend hours dressing herself in fine clothes and brushing her black hair. Then she would stand by the mirror and admire herself. She was so vain that she wanted to be the most beautiful woman in the kingdom. Now the queen's most prized possession was a magic mirror. Every day she asked it, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of us all? If the mirror replied that she was the fairest in the land, the queen was happy and all was well. But sometimes another lady was named. Then the queen would fly into such a terrible rage that the people around her trembled with fear. And the wicked queen would order the poor lady to be killed. A lot of text, not as much art compared to other golden books. That art is very artistic. It's different. It's a different style than the movie. It's not a straight off, okay, we're trying to copy, you know, line for line. Also, fun fact about the word fairest, it just means the one with the palest skin. So it really works for this story because Snow White has very pale skin. It doesn't actually mean beautiful. 
People think that because of the way the story is, but no, the fairest just means one of pale skin, which was considered beautiful at the time. Meanwhile, Snow White was growing up to be more and more beautiful. And as well as being pretty, she was so sweet-natured that everyone loved her. Everyone but the Queen. The Queen looked at Snow White jealously. At last, she could stand the sight of the lovely princess no longer. She banished Snow White to the servants' quarters. Snow White's fine clothes were taken away from her, and she had to dress in rags like the other servants. And like the other servants, Snow White had to work very hard. She slaved from early morning until late at night, scrubbing and cleaning the palace floors, washing the dishes, sewing and mending the queen's clothes. As she worked, she would sing so sweetly that the birds would come to listen to her voice. She will soon lose her beauty, thought the wicked queen, for who can call her lovely in her old rags and with her hands roughened by work? Nevertheless, the queen went to her mirror and day after day asked the same question. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of us all? The wicked, vain queen was still afraid that one day Snow White would grow up to be more beautiful than anyone else in the land. It's kind of interesting. She looks kind of old in that picture. Not as terrifying as the one in the movie. Of course, fun fact, they seem to like using the same lady for um, a lot of their evil female villains. Like, the voice actor who did the Queen here also went on to do um, Sleeping Beauty, the... Maleficent. Well, I think at the time, voice actors may have been attached more to studios like actors were. Mm -hmm. Because actors used to have contracts with studios. And so basically, each studio had a stable of talent. Also, wasn't there something to do with the voice actress for Snow White and the way the contract was done that she couldn't actually do any other work? That is supposedly how it went. And there's also rumors that she's the uncredited voice for the line, Wherefore art thou Romeo in The Wizard of Oz? Hmm. While she worked, Snow White dreamed beautiful daydreams about a handsome prince. Someday, she knew, he would come and carry her off to his castle in the clouds. It seemed to the jealous queen, as she watched Snow White, that the princess grew in loveliness as each day passed. So now we have almost a full two-page spread. I guess they really wanted to show off the whole image here and Snow White down the bottom right-hand corner up above her showing her superiority also I think that that changed color that was like gray slightly greenish in the previous page now it's like full-on green uh, the Queen's hood or whatever yes. you would call it all star is very lovely done nice detail you can actually clearly see the brush strokes on a lot of the little textures they put in Ooh. and indeed Though Snow White wore ragged clothes, her beauty was plain to see. At last came the day the queen had been dreading. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of us all? She said, and the mirror replied, Her lips blood red, her hair like night, her skin like snow, her name Snow White. The angry queen called her huntsman to her. Take the princess into the forest and bring me back her heart in this jeweled box, she said. The huntsman bowed his head in grief. He had no choice but to obey the queen's command. Ooh, shivers up my spine. Ember is really good at reading. And the reason I went, ooh, as we turned the page, that is a very nice drawing of Snow White. Of her with the wishing well as a book we especially the length of a golden book. We don't, we're not really getting the songs here. Though the song kind of semi-popped into my head. Off into the forest went Snow White and the huntsman next day. The princess, not knowing what was in store for her, skipped along beside the huntsman, now stopping to pick violets, now singing a happy tune. At last, the huntsman, heartbroken, 
fell to his knees beside the princess. I cannot kill you, princess, he said, even though it is the queen's command. Run into the forest and hide, and never return to the castle. Another nicely drawn image. Snow White definitely looks frightened, and that is a really good rendition of the hunter from the movie. Looks a lot like him, but has a different quality to him that I really like. Well, Snow White was the first full-length animated motion picture in the U.S., so what they could do with a still drawing compared to what they did with motion drawings. Which reminds me of a, com of a comment I wanted to say near the beginning of the book. So this is how they started the tradition of the parents dying in Disney movies. But I don't remember the father being mentioned in the Disney movie. It's been a long time since I've watched the whole thing. Bear with me. Because for her to be a wicked stepmother, of course her father had, Snow White's father had to marry the evil queen. But it always seemed that we never saw the king. I don't think the king was brought up in the movie. I think it kind of just jumped right into evil queen versus Snow White. Well, if I recall correctly, they were also having more trouble animating male characters because the prince was originally supposed to have a larger role. Yeah, and all I keep thinking is, males are easy. Females are hard. This is coming from an artist. Alone in the forest, Snow White wept with fright. But she was not really alone, she found. All the little woodland animals were her friends. And chirping and chattering happily, they led her to a new home. It was a sweet little, tiny little house in the woods the animals showed Snow White. But no one was home. And when she looked in the window... My, what an untidy sight met her eyes. The sink was piled with unwashed dishes, and everything was thickly blanketed with dust. Maybe the children who live here need someone to keep house for them, said Snow White. Let's clean their house. So in they went. The door probably wasn't locked, so it's not breaking, but entering. Mm. Well, technically under the law, any time you enter in... To a house with the intention of stealing something or doing something that the owners do not want you to do, it's breaking and entering, even though you have not broken anything. And with the help of her new forest friends, Snow White soon had that little house spick and span. Then she went upstairs and fell asleep across the seven little beds. As she slept, home from work came the seven little men who lived in that house in the woods. Okay, I lied. It's not lying when I don't know. I haven't read this book, but we do have some music. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's home from work we go, sang the seven little men, the seven dwarfs. Oh, two pretty little images, and I didn't actually remember Snow White sleeping across all seven beds. But it makes sense, because, you know, size differences, she would actually have to sleep on multiples. <laughs> oh, and that's really interesting is... They now show the picture of her coming up on the cottage here on the back of the page where you read the text. So it's a little off, but there wasn't really enough room to put that here on the previous page and still have a decent amount of text about the house itself. Especially on that previous page where they show a picture of Snow White laying on the ground surrounded by wordling creatures. At most, they could have just kept this first paragraph and that's not enough room for this full page spread, which is quite lovely. Then they saw their little house, just as Snow White had seen it. But they knew at once that something was changed. It was clean! Up the stairs crept the seven dwarfs. And there they found Snow White, just waking up. Oh! cried Snow White. I know who you are. She had read their names on their beds. You're dopey and sneezy and happy and grumpy and dock and bashful and sleepy. Yeah, there they are with their noses peeking over the edge of the beds like in the movie. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Mm -hmm. They look very similar to their movie counterparts. Also, there's a name missing, I think. Dopey, sneezy, happy. No. no it's Two, seven. four, six, seven. And yeah. in the order that they are looking over the bed. Yeah, I think what happens is my brain just blocked out the word dopey for some strange reason, even though he's kind of the goofball of the group. I like goofballs in groups. 
That's because you usually are the goofball in the group. Nee. Snow White told the dwarfs about the Wicked Queen's plot, and they insisted that she must stay with them. Supper is not quite ready yet, said Snow White, who was very pleased to be asked to stay. You'll just have time to wash. Wash? cried all the little men. They had almost forgotten what the word meant. <laughs> but they were soon scrubbed clean, and even Grumpy got a soaking. That was an interesting way to summarize that scene. Of course, you have to remove songs because you can't really put them in a book. A little difficult, and we are limited in space because, I mean, we're how far... We're most of the way through the book. We don't have much time for the rest of the plot. The seven dwarves soon grew to love Snow White and her merry ways. The next morning... The next morning after soon... Okay. The next morning, instead of going to work in their mine... The seven dwarfs decided to make a beautiful new bed for Snow White. Hmm. Was that even a thing? I remember the princess shall sleep upstairs and them all conning for spaces downstairs and fighting over the one and only pillow. Hmm. Well, this is new and I guess this is their way of like, yeah, we're actually going to build this bed, but it's actually going to be her like coffin. <laughs> The seven little men would not have worked so happily if they could have seen beyond the forest. The wicked queen had learned that Snow White was still alive, and now, disguised as an old woman, she was making her way to their very own house with a poisoned apple for Snow White. Ah, uh, and of course, let's get rid of the comb, the corset, the ribbon, because we don't have enough time for the three attempts. Mm-hmm. Also, I think that was the reason they got they cut them out of the movie itself, too. Plus, it was getting kind of expensive to make the movie. Just a little. Also, it's repetitive, so you want to keep your audience engaged. When the dwarves had left Snow White that morning, they had warned her to stay in the house. Be careful of strangers, Grumpy had said, as Snow White kissed him goodbye. And Snow White had promised that she would be careful. Later that day, the old woman knocked at her door. Alas, Snow White could not resist the magic apple. She took one bite and sank lifeless to the floor. Hurrying away, the wicked queen fell into a deep chasm and was never seen again. It, well, that's one way to wrap things up. Well, I told you we were running out of book. But that did not bring Snow White back to life. The sorrowing dwarves laid her upon a bed of golden crystal and kept watch over her night and day. Yeah, that's the only thing that's kind of fuzzy about this story to me, is the whole, like, so they're going to watch over a dead body? Just just in case. Also, those pictures are really nice. Very nice detail on the queen. Poor, poor Grumpy. I did air quotes. Very American of me. Mm-hmm. Also, radio. Yep. Yeah. But, yes, he looks very much like he's struggling. Hmm. Motion lights and everything. Mm-hmm. One day, a handsome prince came to the forest and saw Snow White. Charmed with her beauty, he kissed her. At last, Snow White awoke. The seven dwarfs danced with joy, and the prince carried her off to his castle in the clouds. Okay. Very fun image. But, wow, they had... They really did truncated the end that's where they did all the compression because as we kept going on in the beginning i'm like um we're gonna run out of book here yeah i, I wonder if like they were planning on making the book longer and then at one point during production they were like uh no you can't have that many pages so they went oh and then they rewrote the end part of it well, there is a section here on the back cover. How many of these little golden books have you read? And they have numbers next to them. Maybe we can find it in here. I see several other Disney books listed, but I would think logically they would have been done later. Hmm. So, I don't know. I tried. So this was Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, adapted from Grimm's Fairy Tales. Illustrated by the Walt Disney Studio. Adapted by Ken O'Brien and Al Dempster from the Walt Disney Motion Picture, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Though if you think about the movie, it focuses more on all this beginning stuff because there's so much that 
that they do with the dwarfs is you have several songs for them. The queen doesn't have a song at all. And it's harder to do action sequences in kids' books like this, so truncating the part with the queen and stuff like that kind of works, though the whole, like, oh yeah, she found a ditch and died. Kind of like, okay. Well, remember, children's books can have that kind of, oh, okay, this is gone, now it's done. Hmm. So, what did you think? It was fun to read, very interesting, the art style. You know, it kind of reminds me a little bit about how modern Disney, i.e. Pixar, the Pixar films and the Pixar books and other merchandise have different designs. Mm. They're both still recognizably the characters, they're both officially licensed, but the design is different. The only part of the art that really is odd and I think I know how it happened, is just the eyes and the cover. They look like they're pointing completely opposite directions. I think what happened is this right eye got mispainted. I think so, because it just doesn't quite match up, which is really too bad, because this is your cover. This is what's selling you on the shelf. Because little golden books usually aren't stacked on their sides like other books, because they have the gold covers. They're usually in those special rotating racks which you'll notice if we ever go anywhere to look at children's book other than the used bookstore. No, we haven't gotten to any children's books purchased in a used bookstore. Everything with the exception of the first Cowpoke Clyde book, generously donated by Fan of the Gourmet, Shimmery, provided by Fan of the Gourmet, Cowpoke Clyde Rides the Range, which I purchased through Google Play, and this lovely series of donated books from Sasami-chan have all been from my own collection. Thank you again Sasami-chan for providing all of this wonderful reading material. We'll get to all of it eventually. And thank you for listening. Standard outro. We'll try to have a link to the book. There's a link to shopping. You can leave a comment. There are other videos. Lux is working on updating the playlist, get things a little more streamlined. Yeah. Working on it. <laughs> Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thank you.